Good morning, church. My name is Scott Beard. I'm the lead pastor here at First United Methodist Church in Kirksville. And welcome to this daily devotional. We have devotions every 9.30 every Monday through Friday. And then 9.30 on Sunday, we have our live stream of our worship service. And uh, some of you, of course, worship here in person. Um, today, I was uh, wanted to reflect back on last week's message, which was about the feeding of the multitudes that Jesus did on the hillside shortly after uh, John the Baptist had been killed by King Herod. And uh, Jesus was suffering from that. He, he was a friend and a relative of John, and he sought to kind of get off on his own and to pray. And yet, as he did so, the people continued to follow him. And as the day wore on, it became clear that they needed something to eat. And so uh, we know the story of how there was two fish and five loaves of bread, and Jesus uh, asked God to bless that and gave it to the disciples who then served it to the people. Uh, 5,000 men plus women and children, we don't know how many total that is, but it's a lot, 15,000 probably or more. They all were fed and there was 12 baskets left over. Well, this image of Jesus feeding us uh, the multitudes is not so much about whether it was 5,000 people or 15,000 uh, total or something like that. It's more about the fact that God's grace is abundant that God's grace and mercy is sufficient for all people. And this is something that's hard sometimes for us to get our mind wrapped around because we don't always feel like uh, we are sufficient for or adequate to receive God's mercy. And yet God continues to show that to us. And if you worship with, the, with us either online or in person, you know that we uh, celebrate Holy Communion each and every Sunday because I feel very strongly about that's what the worship service is about is to we, we start this worship service with a call to worship and we have hymns and we have prayers to remember God and to put our uh, praise and our requests. And then we have affirmations of faith. We read scripture and we realize that God's grace is there for us too. And then at the end of each uh, worship service, we celebrate um, the Eucharist or Holy Communion. We celebrate the fact that God send his son Jesus Christ into the world that we might be saved through him and the symbolism of the bread and the being the body and the uh, and the wine the juice being uh, the blood of Christ is, is something that we continue to remind ourselves because Jesus did this at his last supper with his disciples and the story we're talking about the feeding of the multitudes happened prior to that and it kind of foretells this idea that God provides in so many different ways. Uh, and sometimes we feel like we don't have everything that we want, and yet we know that God is continually there, and that God continues to walk uh, the road with us. Within the United Methodist Church and within most Christian churches, we have this idea of um, sacraments, sacred moments with Christ. And, and in the United Methodist Church, we celebrate two of those. One of those is Holy Communion we're talking about now, and the other is baptism, which also represents God's grace and forgiveness. And so we celebrate these things as often as we can, and we invite others to do the same. Well, there's been a lot of great songs written about Holy Communion, and one that I wanted to focus on today is one that uh, I, I grew up loving because it's often played on guitar, and since I like to play guitar, it's, uh, it's nice. Not all hymns work well on guitar. But this one is uh, titled One Bread, One Body, and it was written around 1978 by Father John Foley of the Catholic Church, uh, and it has become one of the most popular communion hymns uh, written. It was written in kind of, in, since he is a Catholic priest, it was written in response or uh, following the, the Second Vatican Council, which was from 1962 to 65. And so for him to write this in 78 would make sense that it fits into that tradition. Plus, it's a, somewhat of a folk song, and it fits uh, that, that time period when folk music was still very popular. But uh, the song One Bread, One Body first appeared in a collection of hymns called Wood Hath Hope, which was published in 1978 by Father John Foley. And it has a mem memorable refrain that draws cr uh, directly from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 16, 17. The cup of blessing which we bless is it not a sharing in the blood of Christ. And that's what we talk about. That's what we say when we lift up our cups, whether individual cups or collective uh, cup. But we, we believe that the Holy Spirit draws us into one body in Jesus Christ. 
And the bread that we break, this is the scripture continuing, is it not a sharing in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. And the image of communion is just startling in its uh, simplicity and also in its uh, vastness, that we are drawn together into one body through Jesus Christ and through this gift of his body and blood. And then there's other biblical references in this song. One is from Galatians 3.28. In the stanza, uh, verse, the first verse, it says, Gentile or Jew, servant or free, woman or man, no more. Um, this is something that we lose sight of even today, this idea that we are all made in God's image, whether we're male or female or other, this, uh, this idea that we are part of God's family, that we are created by God, that we are created in the image of God. And uh, God looks at us and says, this is good. This is good when he looks at each and every one of us. And sometimes we don't feel like we're good. But we truly are God's creation, and God uh, uh, blesses us in so many different ways. But uh, 1 Corinthians 12 also refers to one body in many places, how we are one body in Jesus Christ. And uh, <clears throat> this comes, the, the prayer in the early Christian doc, doctrine, Didache, uh, dated from about 550 to 120 uh, in the current era, uh, common era, and it provides a basis for thoughts in the third stanza. Grain for the field, scattered and grown, gathered to one and for all. And so I, I think that this is a, a stroke of brilliance, I guess, in this song. It really captures the scriptural meaning of Holy Communion and this idea that we are drawn together in one body through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so I'd like to share that with you today and, uh, and think about the joy of Holy Communion. Sometimes I think Holy Communion, we make it a little bit more somber than we need to. It needs to be a celebration of God's grace and God's love and our invitation to share in this heavenly banquet with all. Uh, I talked about last week, it was about spiritual hospitality, how all the spirits of all the world, each and every one of us have our own soul, that we're drawn together through Jesus Christ our Lord. So let me share with you one bread, one body.
are truly one body through Jesus Christ our Lord. We're all created in God's image. We're all called to look to one another as sacred and holy. And I pray that your day is blessed, that you enjoy this uh, late summer weather we have with a little bit milder temperatures today. And I pray that you continue to worship God and to celebrate the gift of God's love. Go in peace and have a beautiful day. Bye-bye.